Hi, I'm Larry Kitchen. I'm chairman of the Visual Arts Department at Kilgore College, and I've been an illustrator for over 30 years. Welcome to my studio. I'm going to help you uh, get set up to paint in this first session that I'm calling the setup. We'll take a look at my palette, my paints, my brushes, and the things that I use and uh, to work through a painting. So here we go. All right, over, over here you'll notice I've got um, a table, and I call it my palette. On the top, we have uh, a glass uh, surface that I've painted uh, slightly off-white. And the reason for that, uh, the paint on the underside, of course, gives me a, you know, a clean surface to judge my paints from. I typically paint on a white surface. Um, so I like my palette to reflect that so that as I mix the colors on the palette, they change when, when I move them up to a surface here. So let's start off with, uh, with the oil paint. Now in, in paint, let me just define what paint is, as strange as that sounds. Paint is actually three separate elements. Any type of paint you will ever use has three parts. First of all, there's dry pigment. Pigment is made from organic materials found on the earth like rocks and insects and squids and a wide variety of things. When those are, are distilled down, they're typically dry. Now that's the first part of paint. The second part of paint is some vehicle to carry the paint, which we call a medium. The medium can be water, it can be oil, or a number of things. And then the third thing is, is an adhesive, uh, something we call a dryer, something to to dry the pigment to the surface. And dryers can be resin or varnish or gum arabic. For example, watercolor paint has pigment in it, and then the medium that you add to it is water, and then what dries it is something called gum arabic that is added to the paint tube with the dry pigment. So with those three combinations, uh, a better understanding of paint, I guess let's take a look at my painting setup. What I have uh, on my palette today is, um, is what I'd normally paint with. I try to keep it generally the same so that there's an intuitive reach uh, on the palette without having to think, oh, red's over on the left this week instead of on the right. So generally, I've got warm to cool uh, on my palette. And what I mean by that is that the, the colors that reflect sunshine or fire are over here on the left, and then icy colors, cool colors, are over here on the right. So on the opposite ends of my palette, I've got white on the left and black on the right. I use a lot more white than I do black, and most painters are that way. White is long as black. So on the left, you'll notice a pile of, of uh, white paint stacked up there. And then beside that, I've got these series of, of uh, ochre or brownish yellow colors uh, that you'll notice. And I've got a primary color, a yellow up here at the top, both a medium yellow cad and then a lemon yellow here, uh, which you'll notice is slightly different. This one looks more like mustard. This one sort of lemony colored. And then beside that, uh, medium cad red. And then I've got my blue sort of arrayed out here. Now it's a little messy here today, and my, my idea was to show you a working palette, not a pretty clean palette, as if I just laid this out. I've been working this week on a large mural, and this is typically what my palette looks like. So if you see a little mess here, then you'll understand why. But I've got ultramarine blue here, a cobalt violet, um, thalo blues or cerulean blues in this area. You notice I've even sprinkled up a leaf green up here, an alizarin crimson, and then some umbers. I've got uh, burnt umber over here, which is a very dark brown, and then finishing up with black. And so that's my, that's my oil paint array. Let me show you um, in my palette how I, how I store this. Now this may cause uh, you to have to pan down a little bit, but underneath here, I always wanted to see in people's studios you know, how they set things up. So hopefully this is interesting to some of you. But my tray is, consists of lots of brushes, which I go through brushes, but I like to keep them right here at hand. And then my second drawer is my paints. I've got a lot more paints in the closet back there, but I keep my starting lineup right here. So currently I'm using a zinc white, which uh, is, is made through a chemical process of actually uh, building white up onto, I think they're copper plates or something, an acid bath, and they rake the white off, and that ends up you giving you a zinc white. 
Secondly, uh, this color I've got um, here in a Windsor and Newton, and it's a yellow ochre. It's a very light, light tone of ochre. And then next, I've got this color, another Windsor and Newton, and it's a raw sienna. Now, you might wonder, you know, what's the proper way to put paint on your palette? That sounds simple, but some people do it in such a messy way that it creates a, uh, a big problem because, you know, the paint starts to crawl up the hand. So here's what I do. I, I squirt it, you know, in a vertical position and then just pull it off like that. And then you end up with a, with a pretty clean nozzle there that you can put this back on and there's no paint gathering around your paint tube. So try to be neat with your paints and that will pay off for you. Well, at any rate, um, that's, that's the lineup of my paints. Now, uh, another very necessary tool for paints is to have a pair of pliers handy because often, uh, you know, if paint gets on the thread, it'll lock it in and you can't get it off with your fingers. So a little pair of pliers will loosen that up for you. And in extreme cases, a match underneath the plastic lid will loosen up and soften that so that, you know, you can get your, your lid off. So that's my paint drawer. I keep drawing utensils down here, um, you know, in my bottom drawer for layout and design, which is here, you know, charcoal. Now let's talk about some other of the implements that I that I use for painting that you see here on on my setup. Here are uh, about four brushes that I'm using currently on on this project, and these are called filbert brushes. Now they are hog's hair, they're, they're trimmed to, to a curve and they're narrow in one direction and in the other direction. That helps quite a bit because a, a stroke on the narrow side gives you thin and then a stroke on the wide side gives you a thick, so it's fairly versatile. These uh, can be cleaned up with, in this case, turpentine and then soap and water. And you should always clean your brushes at the end of your sessions of painting. I lay. Um, from three to five brushes out on this surface um, because I'm jumping back and forth depending on what I'm using at the time. I always try to paint with the biggest brush that I can stand. You want to start with big broad strokes and then finish up with small strokes. So um, you know, think in those kind of terms with your brushes. Um, also I'll have palette knives um, you know, ready at hand and these these palette knives help you in, in mixing up color. So let's, let me just mix up a little color. I'm going to take the back edge of, of this white. I'm going to put it out there like so. And if I wanted to make a pink or a, you know, a very light, light tone in that regard, I take just the smallest amount of red and mix it into a pretty good pile of, of white and then just mix that together like batter and you end up with a with a nice creamy color. And the palette knives can mix up sort of piles of color for you for speed uh, when, you know, if you've got a small brush in your hand, it might take a little bit longer. You can also apply to the surface with the palette knife for textured effects.